I am confident that I have not broken any laws nor taken any actions that were dishonest or dishonorable in their intent or in their outcome. With pride and defiance, Oregon's governor ends the speculation. I have always tried to do the right thing, and now the right thing to do is to step aside. And the next governor ready to lead as the state heals. This is truly a sad day for the state of Oregon. But a growing list of allegations lingers. Resigning does not make any prior misconduct, if there was any, go away. As a new chapter in Oregon history begins. This is KGW News at 6. One thing I hope people know about me is that I love this state and its people, its rivers, its mountains, and its landscapes with every fiber of my being. It is because of that love that I tender my resignation as governor effective at 10 a.m. on February 18, 2015. It's a historic day for Oregon as John Kitzhaber becomes only the fifth governor in the state to resign and the first to step down because of scandal. It's also historic for his successor. Next week, Kate Brown will become Oregon's second woman governor and the first to identify as bisexual. Good evening, I'm Laurel Porter. Tracy Berry and Joe Domlin are live in Salem where it's been a painful day for the state of Oregon. Joe and Tracy. Thanks so much, Laurel. You know, a couple of things we need to bring everyone up to date on. Willamette Week is reporting certainly that there are more signs that this is not going away despite the announcement of resignation. Willamette Week saying that the Department of Justice has now sent subpoenas wanting to take a look at the Sylvia Hayes consulting contracts as well as emails, other computer documents that are being held by the state. The feds have been pretty quiet about whether there was any investigation already underway at this point. This is our first confirmation that the federal criminal investigation continues as well as a criminal investigation here at the state level. Well, we there was a lot of talk about whether there may have been some negotiations regarding Governor Kitzhaber's exit. We know now that, as you said, there won't be any, if uh, many, changes as to what happens moving forward. But it was interesting that that announcement came about an hour after the governor announced himself that he was going to step aside. After a week of mounting pressure, political insiders anticipated this happening today. And a little after noon today, it in fact did, the governor saying he will step down. Let's bring in Kylie Boshi now. He's been at the Capitol all day for us. Kyle, an interesting and somber day here for many. Well, today's decision ends a wild week in which the governor initially told staffers he was going to resign, then appears to have changed his mind. He avoided reporters as best he could. Many of them staked out his home and his office before finally releasing an audio recording today in which he said he's stepping down. A stunning fall from grace just one month after John Kitzhaber was sworn in for a historic fourth term as Oregon governor, he stepped down. As reporters gathered inside his Salem office, the 67-year-old avoided the cameras by releasing an audio recording. I'm announcing today that I will resign as governor of the state of Oregon. Kitzhaber faced mounting pressure to leave office as a result of a public corruption scandal involving his fiancée, Sylvia Hayes. In his statement, Kitzhaber denied any wrongdoing, but admitted the constant barrage of headlines has become a distraction. Yes, I understand that I have become a liability to the very institutions and policies to which I have dedicated my career and indeed my entire adult life. Kitzhaber will officially step down at 10 a.m. on February 18th. He'll be replaced by Oregon Secretary of State Kate Brown. This is truly a sad day for the state of Oregon. But I am confident that legislators will come together to move Oregon forward. I know you all have a lot of questions, and I will begin to answer those questions as soon as possible. As you can imagine, uh, between now and Wednesday, we have a lot of work to be done, and that's what I'm going to go back and do. Oregon's attorney general said this resignation will not impact the ongoing criminal investigation into Kitzhaber or his fiancée, Sylvia Hayes. I am confident that I have not broken any laws nor taken any actions that were dishonest or dishonorable in their intent or in their outcome. After 37 years as a public official, this scandal has taken down one of Oregon's most enduring politicians. John Kitzhaber highlighted a lot of his accomplishments in that audio recording today, but he also strongly blamed the media. He doesn't feel like 
he's being treated fairly. And also the political allies he feels have deserted him. Mm -hmm. Kyle, thanks. Well, we've heard uh, from a lot of those, you know, mm -hmm. former allies today, as well as other lawmakers and state officials. And I think the general consensus when you look at all of their statements is that they feel Governor Kitzhaber did the right thing by stepping down for the state. It was too distracting right. at this point. If you wonder how painful this has been, though, for friends of John Kitzhaber, Exhibit A would be Peter Courtney, the Agreed. Senate president. And that was certainly evident today in an interview with KGW. Chris Willis, the only reporter to speak with him today, and this is an interview you don't want to miss. Chris? Well, for the key players involved in this resignation, it has been an emotional week. Let's take you back. On Tuesday, Senate President Peter Courtney and Speaker Tina Kotek met privately with the governor. Behind closed doors, the governor told them he was going to resign. Then Wednesday, he changed his mind and said he wasn't going anywhere. Thursday, the three of them met again. Only this time, Kotek and Courtney told the governor he's got to go. And then Friday, today, the resignation. I sat down, as you mentioned, with Peter Courtney today, and he was clearly emotional. I asked him if he thought the governor did the right thing by resigning, and he said yes, he did, but he didn't like the question. Listen. I, I struggle with that question because I don't want to put him down by saying yes, and that's what worries me, because that question sort of suggests, yes, he did what was best for his state because he wasn't a good person, and that's what I don't like about that question. So that's where you're getting this this hesitancy in me. I don't think you probably expected an answer like that at all, because that question's asked all the time, and, and, and I notice certain political figures saying he needs to resign for the better of the state, and I'm just going to tell you about that. You know, uh, he's done good by this state for, a lot, for 36 to 40 years, so let's not, that one moment here today, define him. That is, that is totally not fair. That is not fair. That is not fair, and I will argue that vehemently. Clearly mixed emotions and a rough week for the Senate president. You know, I also asked Courtney why he thought the governor resigned today, but it won't take effect until next week. He told me that's the same plan the governor told him about Tuesday when he was originally going to resign three days ago. Now back to you. Interesting interview for sure. Chris Willis, thank you live for us. And as we continue our coverage here now, we want to bring you up to date on the very latest regarding all of the investigations. And there have been a number of late developments today. That's right. Pat Doris is in the newsroom with the legal troubles that still haunt the governor. Pat. Well, Joe and Tracy, they certainly do not go away. If anything, this resignation announcement today forced federal prosecutors to come out into the open. Well, Lamont Week reporting that they've served wide ranging subpoenas on the governor's office, 11 agencies and 15 people, including Kitzhaber and Hayes. Willamette Week reports that federal subpoenas target the private consulting contracts that Hayes landed while a policy advisor and first lady to Governor John Kitzhaber. Federal prosecutors would not share the subpoenas with us, but issued a statement which reads in part, public corruption investigations are extremely important because such allegations, if proven true, strike at the very core of our government's ability to serve the people of this state and this country. Kitzhaber and Hayes also face a state criminal corruption investigation Law professor Tung Yin says resigning does not make that go away. Resigning does not end or does not make any prior misconduct if there was any go away. It's kind of like taking a credit card and cutting it up. You won't get any more debt, but it, the debt you've incurred is still there. The attorney general issued a statement which seems to reinforce that idea. It reads, the governor's decision to resign will not affect our ongoing investigation into allegations of his and Ms. Hayes' conduct. Oregonians deserve nothing less than a full and fair investigation to all the facts, as well as the opportunity to reach a resolution that will truly allow our state to move forward. So the problem is still just beginning. By the way, our news partner, The Oregonian, has just posted online the actual subpoena. And it turns out that there is a federal grand jury that's actually investigating this. And they have subpoenaed a number of people. The names are posted. It includes not only Hayes and Kitzhaber, but people like Kitzhaber's chief of staff, his lawyer, the head of the Department of Administrative Services, and a number of other people. And they're asking for records that go back six years. So the net is definitely getting wide. Back to you. 
All right, thank you, Pat. I don't think it's just lawmakers that are struggling with the announcement and the decision today. I think voters are also trying to come ter to terms with how this all happened to a man they just reelected to an historic fourth term. Uh, there's a lot of interesting, um, I guess, observations from yeah, voters very thoughtful, that, that I we think. found thoughtful, very, very well, uh, good point too. Let's check in with Maggie Vest because she has more of some of this reaction from the many voters around the state. Maggie. That's right, Joe Tracy. As you can imagine, we heard a wide variety of opinions about the governor's announcement today and about the process that led up to it. We also heard a lot of questions, a lot of uncertainty, because even though the office of Secretary of State is an elected public office, many tell us they just don't feel like they know an awful lot about their next governor, Kate Brown. I really don't. I mean, I know, you know, I've sort of read the articles about it when she was running and so forth, but I really don't know too much about her. Not a whole lot, no. No, not not too much. Uh, the last thing I read about it was in, you know, the voters manual. So I assume there'll be articles and she'll come out and speak. And yeah, I'm very surprised. I guess I, I got some homework. I'm going to look look her up tonight and kind of see what her politics are. But um, hopefully, you know, she kind of um, represents the state of Oregon well. I think Kate has proven herself to be uh, a, a good professional in government. And I think she will do a, a good job as uh, governor. So you're comfortable moving forward? I am comfortable, and it's nice to see a woman get the job. And while most told us they were hopeful tonight, that last one that you heard from, that last voter, actually was the lone standout out of literally dozens that I talked to who says he feels like he knows Secretary Brown well as a public official, and he says he feels confident in her abilities to lead our state out of these trying times. Back to you. Maggie, thank you very much. It sounds, Tracy, like a lot of people are already starting to move on, which at this point is the only option. The governor announcing today he's resigning, and as of Wednesday of next week, we're going to have Kay Brown as the uh, person assuming the duties here in the governor's office. Boy, and isn't that the case in politics anyway, yeah. right? You have to move on. Always nice to have some analysis of these things, too. Absolutely. Lynn Bergstein has been with us most of the week and really could not see any other path for the governor at this point. He's with Laurel Porter tonight back at the studio. Laurel. We want to pick up on that report from Maggie Vespa about the citizens of Oregon. Len, let me ask you, with all the uncertainty we've had, the scandal surrounding Hayes and Governor Kitzhaber, now the resignation, how is that affecting average Oregonians? Well, I think people are confused, stunned. It's a dizzying pace, as you said, and all the reporters have had. I mean, these facts are moving so quickly. The narrative doesn't set for a moment that allows people to kind of say, okay, now I understand this. I'm going to think about it and try and kind of make some sense out of it. So it's every news story is a new set of facts. It's moving beyond what I think people have a process. So it's, it's going to take a while for people to feel comfortable, even if they think they know Kate Brown or come to be very at ease like that uh, citizen was with her credentials. And she is a fully credentialed person to be a great governor. They, uh, they're going to say there's so much uncertainty and confusion around it that it's going to rub off on their feeling about her ability to lead. A lot of people admired Governor Kitzhaber and trusted him. What does this do to public trust? Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, we're living in an era where we over and over and over again see a politician that misuses the trust. And usually it's outside of our borders. That's the thing that I think is so stunning about Not this in story. Oregon. Yeah, Chicago. You expect the governor to, of Illinois to be kind of a little bit wacky or, uh, new, you know, kind of New Orleans and, uh, and what have you, all of these states. But Oregon, you expect some sort of stability and some sort of, and particularly with John Kitzhaber, he's not, so he's somebody we think we knew and somebody we know, we've liked his values, we've elected him historic times. So uh, it's it's very unsettling. I think that's uh, that's got to be the mood going into this weekend, this birthday of the state. It's a very unsettling weekend. And on the legal wrangling that's going on that Pat Doris was talking about now with the FBI, or I guess it's the federal prosecutors issuing subpoenas, does that Take it up a notch for oh. Governor Kitzhaber and Oh, Hayes? yeah, the stakes go up dramatically. This is, you know, it's no longer that he's the victim of a political allies or the victim of some news reporter that's kind of got a bad story. This is, this is very serious stuff. And talking about Kate Brown, we've heard national headlines. The nightly news reporter yeah. ended her piece saying that Kate Brown is the first openly bisexual governor. But you think she should be recognized for much more than that. Well, first of all, I know that there would be people who, uh, who are supportive of civil rights in Oregon, who would be, celebrate the fact that that's where she is or what she believes in. 
I happen to think she's the first, she's the second openly woman governor. That's what we ought to be thinking about. Oregon should be proud and celebrate the fact that a, a fully qualified political person is going to take the reins of government as a, our governor.